Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, I'm John. I'm John Wong, um, uh, the child psychiatrist from NUH and NUS. Um, I am very privileged to have been able to work with my team of colleagues uh, in a medical treatment subcommittee uh, under the uh, chairmanship of the main committee of Daniel. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the many, many of my colleagues who actually spent many hours plying through the literature on medical treatment. Uh, we have a multidisciplinary team with uh, our pediatrician, uh, Prof. Mary Daniel. She was around just now. <laughs> um, we have June. June is here. Uh, we have uh, the senior pharmacist from IMH, uh, Li Chen. And we also have a multidisciplinary team of uh, uh, non doctors, non uh, pharmacists. Um, that is, um, we have the uh, advanced practitioner nurse, Bo In. Uh, we have uh, educational psychologists uh, and clinical psychologists, as well as uh, occupational therapists, as well as PhD candidate students who help with the literature review. You'll be wondering how come we, for medical treatment review, we have the allied health professional. Uh, for two reasons, many of them were trained in literature review, so they give us expanded team and man hours. But more importantly, they are um, uh, intimately involved in the treatment of ADHD children. And uh, they do understand and see the other, uh, both the therapeutic and adverse effect of uh, medication on the children. The methodology, um, we basically scanned uh, PubMed and site info database. And we look at studies, reports, uh, systematic review, and some of the national ADHD guidelines. And the terms identified includes ADHD, ADD, uh, hyperkinetic disorder, uh, and attention deficit. And it was an analysis of evidence-based systematic reviews, uh, as well as consensus meeting within the subcommittee, as well as the main committee. And the evidence were graded as, uh, uh, into the frame of the level of evidence, uh, from the lowest uh, level 4 to highest level 1++, plus plus, as well as the grades of recommendation uh, starting from good practice points uh, to um, uh, the highest grade of uh, recommendation, grade A. And at the end, we had an invited consultation. Uh, I'd like to qualify at this point of time, uh, given the span of 20 minutes, uh, and given that this is a CPG uh, launch uh, presentation, uh, we were working within the confine of this CPG. So it's not a, a, a presentation of a meta-literature review. Uh, so that is the, the, the qualification I'd like to make. You saw these slides earlier on, but what I'd like to impress upon our colleagues in the primary care uh, here is that given the many, many uh, different causes of disease burden that affect Singaporeans uh, by age group, you can see that um, ADHD actually incur six years loss of a uh, disability year. Uh, I think this is equivalent to uh, some of the conditions like anxiety, depression, uh, similar to Alzheimer's and other dementia in terms of number of years loss. Although the qualification here is that it's a late onset, this is really obviously starting in the early childhood. And the other qualification I'd like to make is that for the medical, medical treatment review we conduct, conducted, essentially we have scoped it uh, to include studies uh, involving school aged children as well as adolescents. Uh, we decided not to extend the literature review into the adult treatment because that itself is another emerging area of research. Just to recap, I think uh, you heard uh, the overall presentation of ADHD by Daniel. But uh, more importantly, I think out of the three clusters of symptoms of hyperactivity, impulsivity, as well as inattention, uh, from the various imaging study now, I think it's quite clear that um, it's uh, uh, pretty much linked to a prefrontal cortex um, of the various areas. Um, given the selective attention has been um, identified as uh, uh, the circuitry involving the dorsal anterior cingulate co cortex, um, with regards to sustained attention problem solving, uh, is the dorsal um, prefrontal cortex that's involved. And with, re with regards to the um, hyperactive symptoms, it's the prefrontal motor cortex that has been in implicated. And of course, the impulsive symptoms is really the orbitofrontal cortex. So you can see that actually there are four areas that light up when they uh, 
do an imaging study on children with ADHD with a three symptoms cluster of hyperactivity, impulsivity, as well as inattention, which is divided into two subgroups of selective attention versus sustained attention problem solving. Uh, and basically, uh, from a biochemical and biological uh, uh, understanding, uh, a lot of the symptoms are pointing towards a dysregulation of dopamine and non uh, epinephrine. So, the quick overview um, I, I hope that you will, you will refer to uh, all the, the, the summarized um, uh, literature that is. Uh, uh, printed in page 31 to page 50 under medical treatment. Uh, what I would like to highlight in this uh, 10 minutes brief essentially is that um, most of the stimulants medication and non-stimulant medication that is available and registered with HSA for use in ADHD in Singapore are mainly the methylphenidate group as well as um, the uh, atomoxetine, which is a selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor group. But of course, there are other uh, alpha 2 agonists of clonidine available, bupropine available, tricyclic antidepressants is available, uh, as well as uh, um, modafinil uh, that can be uh, secured through special arrangement. So there are many medications that can be used, but as far as uh, license for use for ADHD uh, in Singapore at the moment. I think we are restricted to uh, the methylphenidate group, both uh, uh, short acting as well as a long acting, as well as uh, tamoxetine. If you were to refer to the the um, guideline, obviously um, there are several medications where uh, the uh, initiating dose, the uh, duration of action, as well as uh, um, the possible side effect to look out for. I think it's listed there. Uh, what I hope to do is really, in the next uh, five minutes, is really highlight what are the key issues for our primary care colleagues who need to uh, uh, provide shared care treatment or management of ADHD children to really look at what are the possible issues that they need to be aware of. Um, with regards to um, Methylphenidate, I think many of us are very familiar with the use of uh, Ritalin, uh, which has very good effect size of about 0.8 as compared to uh, atomoxetine effect size of 0.6 versus the psychosocial treatment which you heard from um, uh, Sehau earlier on, which is about 0.31. Uh, at the effect size of 0.8, obviously, I think this is really a very good uh, outcome. Uh, for its efficacy. I think the only problems we face, which all the pediatrician and child psychiatrists uh, face, is that it's of a short duration uh, and it's not sustained uh, in terms of therapeutic effect after the effect wears off. Um, but of course, uh, we are also capitalizing on the short duration of action uh, to mitigate against the, 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 the long lasting effect of uh, adverse. Uh, effect experienced by the child, commonly uh, the uh, insomnia, uh, rest, um, the uh, poor appetite, the irritation, agitation, uh, as well as sometimes nausea. And for some of the young children who first started on methylphenidate, obviously uh, the uh, problem of abdominal pain. Those are the common side effects that we are familiar with with uh, uh, Ritalin. Uh, Second is that the, the other medicine that we are familiar with using, obviously, is uh, atomoxetin, which is a good alternative uh, to um, methylphenidate, uh, especially in children with comorbidity of tick disorder, uh, as well as uh, epilepsy. Um, I think the, the two things to take note of uh, for atomoxetin uh, is really Uh, that the efficacy is slower, uh, in, lower in, uh, at 0.6. At, at the same time, the onset of action is a lot slower, between two to four weeks, as compared to the near immediate action of Ritalin of 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, second issue challenge with atomoxetine, obviously, uh, is that it does being a selective uh, uh, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, it does cause increased heart rate similar to uh, 
methylphenidate. It also causes nausea. It also causes uh, uh, poor appetite. Uh, so the range of side effects is not very, very different, except that it may be uh, less problematic with children with a comorbid mototic disorder. Um, but occasionally, some children who do not tolerate methylphenidate well, they do tolerate a tamoxetine. So it can be a good alternative. And if there are children who have uh, comorbid conditions, uh, atomoxetine can be a uh, first-line treatment uh, of choice. So very quickly, I think um, I would like to just highlight what are the key issues um, that will help to summarize the key essence of the guideline. One is really um, the first recommended treatment intervention for any ADHD child or adolescent who is recently diagnosed is really the psychosocial intervention, which includes behavior intervention, parenting, as well as classroom management. I think this has been proven to be sustainable, proven to be cost-effective, although it may uh, cost a little bit more in the near term, but if there is a good supportive school and home environment, many of the uh, clinicians have found that that is probably the most effective to begin with. But we do recognize that it does take a couple of months to half a year or even a year for parents and the teachers to really see the change in behavior and learning outcome. And that's where I think um, many of the studies have found that given the quick action as well as a, 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 a good effect size, medication is often a treatment of choice for many parents as well as clinicians. So when medication is considered for treatment, uh, methylphenidate would be considered, uh, should be considered first choice. Uh, given the clear evidence, and this is really at uh, grade A level 1 plus. And given the challenge of children and adolescents needing to go on uh, longer term uh, therapy, uh, it may range from 1 to 5 years, depending on the academic progress, as well as behavioural challenges. Uh, it has been shown that at grade B level 1 plus uh, 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 grade B evidence, um, you, you, it has been shown that the long-term treatment of uh, attention deficit and hyperactivity symptoms uh, is sustained, can be sustained, uh, but it should be reviewed regularly. And for the many of the clinicians, we have found anecdotally that um, as the child grows older into adolescent, into secondary school years, uh, many of them do have reduction in hyperactivity symptoms, although their inattention symptoms do uh, 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 persist. And those who benefited um, from uh, stimulant medication, uh, the indication of use of stimulant into the secondary school years uh, usually is supported. Um, and one common problem or challenge that pediatrician and child psychiatrists come across where parents will uh, present to us will be the poor appetite and poor growth in certain children, especially the fastidious eater to begin with. I think there are a few uh, 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 strategies that, that uh, many clinicians have found to be effective. One, obviously, is really to time the use of medication uh, after a meal, after breakfast. Second, is to really provide a makeup meal or snack after dinner or before bedtime to allow the child to catch up on the total calorie intake for the day. And that helps to minimize or mitigate against the potential uh, risk of uh, poor nutritional intake and poor growth. So the other commonly used strategy for clinicians, obviously, is drug holidays. And, and nowadays, many parents have read from the uh, internet and, and media, and they normally will request and ask for a drug holiday for the child, whether it be on a weekend or, or during the long school holiday. Um, the, the recommendation is that uh, it's definitely uh, a, a viable strategy. Uh, the only consideration is that when the child is on drug holiday, parents as well as his social environment must be prepared to accept a, behavior, a level of behaviour change or level of behaviour that is not uh, uh, similar or not the same as what they are familiar with during the school days where the child is on medication. Uh, this is important so that the child do not attract unnecessary negative attention when they are off medication. And secondly, when they um, 
uh, on drug holiday on weekend, it's also important for parents to be able to moderate and down-regulate the kind of academic activities as expected of them. One of the risks of uh, long-term use of uh, 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 similar medication for young children, obviously, is that it may impact on the appetite. And if the parents do not uh, regulate or uh, provide additional nutritional intake uh, in the later part of the day when the medication effect wears off, obviously the child's growth can be affected. And so for clinicians who are providing uh, maintenance treatments for children with uh, stimulant medication, it's important to regularly, every six to nine months, monitor the uh, weight and height. And you can uh, take reference on the BMI. Uh, Health Promotion Board has published a BMI for age uh, chart on the web, and you can use that as a reference to uh, uh, review if the child is growing appropriately according to the age. Um, with regards to uh, certain children who are fastidia eater uh, and uh, who have slowed down of their growth rate to the point where they are severely lagging behind, I think it's important to discuss with the pediatrician and to see how uh, the child could be taken off the medicine uh, if the behavioural issues or the learning issues can be managed behaviourably. And as any treatment, be it methylphenidate, uh, uh, short-acting or long-acting, or atomoxetin, there is always an important uh, uh, guide that is to start at a low dose. Uh, the starting range uh, dose for, for methylphenidate is about 0.6 mg per kilogram. You can stretch up to 1 uh, mg per kilogram, but normally for our Asian children, most of them actually get away with good, pretty good symptom control, about 0.6 to 0.7 mg per kilogram. And sometimes where parents are quite comfortable and the child is quite comfortable with subclinical uh, uh, um, uh, 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 management of their, their, their behaviour, uh, where they do not want a complete um, reversal of their behaviour, um, sometimes some of children actually uh, get away with about 0.4 or 0.5 milligram per kilogram. As far as atomoxetin, uh, the starting dose is about 0.5 milligram per kilogram, and after four to six days, uh, you can upregulate to about one milligram per kilogram. Uh, so their, their dosage comes in 18, 25, uh, 10, 18, 25 milligram. So uh, the advantage of atomoxetin obviously is uh, 24 hours coverage uh, as compared to Ritalin, which is four to six hours for the immediate release. And then for Concerta, it's about eight to 12 hours. And then for Ritalin LA, which is about eight hours. Um, the other post, uh, frequent questions that parents or, or teachers would ask are the safety profile of methylphenidate. They are most concerned about two uh, ad pos possible adverse uh, effects. One, um, obviously, as I mentioned before, uh, is really the appetite change. Uh, the second, actually, is uh, a black box warning of uh, uh, suicidal ideas. Um, strong. The, the, the black box effect of cardiogenic, sudden, sudden cardiac death in children. Um, I think the, the literature review has shown that um, they have found that children with structured uh, congenital heart uh, conditions as well as conduction defect are uh, at a higher risk. Um, but uh, the, 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 they also recognise during the review of the, 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 the uh, series of uh, cases, uh, they found that those who, have, uh, who do not have a, a structural defect or conduction defect, uh, there is no uh, adverse risk to, cons to be worried about a sudden cardiac death in this group of children. So the two things that as a clinician we need to recognise is to really take a good uh, detailed history of the child's birth as well as developmental history to make sure that there's no uh, uh, cardiac, effect, uh, cardiac defect or, or symptoms of concern. Two, is to really take a family history of sudden cardiac death as well as a, con a congenital heart uh, condition. Um, secondly, if a child is found to uh, have any murmur or, or, uh, or you suspect any 
heart condition, it's important to refer to the pediatric cardiologist to do assessment before starting on any stimulant medication. Uh, the same applies uh, for atomoxetine uh, uh, before uh, one uh, initiate treatment. With regards to comorbidity, um, I think the two frequent comorbidity we come across in cases that are referred for management of hyperactivities are the uh, autistic spectrum disorder um, as well as motor tic disorder. With regards to motor tic disorder, uh, literature review has shown that um, some children with uh, pre-existing motor tic disorder, the use of stimulant medication do not increase or accentuate uh, the motor tic condition. But there are reports to suggest that uh, some children with motor tic disorder, their tics actually worsen after uh, the administration of uh, metafenidate. So it's important that to note two things. One is that it's not a contraindication to use stimulant medication for children with motor tic disorder. But as a clinician, we need to explain to the parents uh, the potential risk that the motor tic disorder may, may worsen. And if that's the case, we can... Uh, terminate the use of stimulant and consider a tamoxetine. Um, with regards to um, uh, treating uh, the use of stimulant in uh, the autistic spectrum disorder children to manage their disruptive behavior, uh, uh, it's been uh, literally has shown that it is uh, efficacious. Uh, the only challenge is that we have to monitor the side effect very closely, and the side effect includes irritability anxiety, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, nausea, uh, which tends to be a bit more common uh, in ASD children compared to uh, children without ASD. So the use of uh, metafenidate uh, stimulant medication in ASD children is not contraindicated, but we should monitor the effect profile carefully. Uh, with regards to um, uh, parents' concern about potential uh, risk of dependency or abuse uh, in the use of metalphenidate, uh, it is recognised that immediate release metalphenidate uh, or quick-acting uh, metalphenidate can be abused uh, if it's administered uh, via other routes that is not recommended medically or in dosages that is not recommended me medically. So there has been report to suggest that for teenagers and adolescents who may have the risk of uh, substance abuse or who may have uh, abused substances before, uh, it's useful to consider uh, the use of long-acting uh, methylphenidate uh, should the need be. Going on to atomoxetine as the other alternative treatment, uh, as mentioned before, the um, uh, the effect size is obviously slightly lower than um, uh, methylphenidate, but it's a good alternative, at least in Singapore, until such time we get the license to uh, use guanfacin uh, or there's a, a great, greater uh, familiarity with the use of clonidine as a combination therapy. So with regards to atomoxetine, I think it's important <coughs> to uh, recognise that um, um, it can be a good alternative besides mototic disorder as a comorbidity, uh, it can also be an alternative for those who have higher risk of uh, substance abuse. Um, the periodic monitoring of growth as well as a uh, uh, mental state where the child may have suicidal thinking is uh, indicated uh, and this is an area that, that is not um, to be taken lightly. Uh, as compared to uh, the impact on growth uh, on children. Uh, most parents find that um, the, the, if the child do not uh, tolerate well, uh, tolerate metalphenidate well because of poor appetite, generally uh, the children do uh, have the similar problem with tamoxetine. So uh, not always, but it's not uncommon. So it's, it's a, a Challenging uh, uh, situation sometimes, uh, atomoxetine may not totally be uh, able to uh, be an alternative for those children who do not feed well.
on the use of uh, methylphenidate and atomoxetin as a combination treatment, uh, this is an area, uh, this is one uh, area that is not recommended. Uh, it has been reported uh, that the, the combined use was um, trout to enhance the effect, the treatment effect of uh, treatment, uh, poor treatment response. Uh, but because of the side effect, uh, it was not recommended. And this is a grade C level 2 plus. The last two parts is really the use of um, uh, either methylphenidate or atomoxetine in preschool children. Uh, I think this is one area that many times confront uh, is, a, is a challenging uh, cha uh, situation for a pediatrician who looks after younger children. The recommendation from the literature is to really embark on evidence-based psychosocial intervention uh, and allow the child to grow a bit older. It is quite clear that uh, up to six years old, um, in the prefrontal cortex, that's where all the dendrites, uh, the synapses are forming at the peak about six years old. And from six to 12 years old, uh, there, there's uh, pruning. And by 12 years old, uh, quite a lot of uh, the synapses are, are, are removed. So it's, it's quite important to allow the child to really uh, reach the age of six to seven, where you allow the maximum opportunity for the synapses to, to, to establish uh, before the natural pruning takes place. Uh, so the recommendation for, 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 for children before six years old or preschool, uh, there are instances that medication has been used, but it has to be used with a very uh, careful monitoring uh, and especially uh, monitoring for the side effect as well as assess the treatment response. Uh, 